and I'll have a vanilla, one of the vanilla bullshit things, you know. You, whatever you want, some vanilla bullshit, latte, kappa thing, you know, whatever you got. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, Larry, no, bullshit, I, motherfucker. I, I you know. are such a bald asshole. Uh, I'm not sure. What is that? Oh, that's, that's mine. It. Hey. This is the one you're That's it, about? yeah. Mondo. Mondo freaks. Mondo freaks. How's it going, everybody? Happy Sunday night. Happy Curb Your Enthusiasm series finale day, April 7th, 2024. So good. Cheers. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. So full disclosure to everybody, it's going to be a little looser of an episode, which is great because the juice is loose. Uh, I say this to say we normally meet backstage and then like talk about it and like have our talking points all out. We met backstage, talked for what, 10 seconds? And I'm like, you ready? Yeah, just go let's, let's go. go live. Let's go live. <laughs> so I'm Rob Fishback. With me, as always, my co host for this show, Justin the Juice. What's going on? Uh, this episode. All right. So where do you want to start? Uh, airplane mode. Airplane mode. I love, I love how that like bit just went on and the squealer yeah. thing. You know, yeah. like nobody likes a squealer. <laughs> it was a squealer situation. Uh yeah, that was great. Yeah. I don't fly often. I've been on the airplane. Right. I've so I flew in two thousand and seven and then the next time I flew was two thousand and twenty one and I haven't flown since. Yeah. I drive everywhere. So I don't I get it. I don't experience it a lot. Are you a frequent flyer? Well, thanks to Mike and Bethany and the whole Schmodown community, I have definitely flown like by myself a decent amount in the past gotcha. three years, 2021. Yes, probably probably six or seven. Well, with layovers included, they're in back again like 14 times probably in the last three years. Okay. So I like to pride myself as not a snitch. Like I'm not going to snitch on my common man, my common yeah. citizen. However – Airplane mode is one of those things I don't want to mess around with because you never know how serious it is. So I could see myself snitching on an airplane mode setting. I could too because I – listen, I could be completely wrong. This might not be accurate at all. Mm -hmm. But I've heard that the reason you got to go to airplane mode is because – They've got to do all this technical stuff and they don't want all the cell phone Why would you waves like interfering with that. Again, could be totally wrong. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Same thing at gas stations. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to have your cell phone near like the pump oh. at a gas station. I, I heard that was, that's, that's like, you're not supposed to do that either. And I you're was not like, supposed to get back into your car, but. Oh, while the gas is pumping. Yeah. Oh, I do that all the time. I, I do live, it all the time. Too. I live in and, Illinois. It's fucking yeah, cold. Yeah. And oh, like, God. you ever, are you ever just in like basketball shorts? Because. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Basketball all shorts. But it's also only like 35 degrees. It's also, outside. yeah. 20. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 20. <laughs> I'll do it at 20. Yeah. You know, you're only out for 30. You swipe the card, right. swipe your speedy rewards card or wherever, wherever you yeah. get your yeah. <laughs> Put the pump in, go sit down. Right. Two minutes later, it's over with. But yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's what I've, so you've heard similar things to the, why the airplane mode is. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Signals, a lot of crap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, so speaking of, I drive, like I said, I drive everywhere. So lane etiquette. Mm. Urging. Yep. Yep. Listen, man. So I lived in Tennessee for a little while. I went to school down there and it was like night and day difference everybody around here says i drive like a 90 year old man they've always said that i yeah. I, I i drive the speed limiter like at most five over sure. um usually hang out in the right lane all the time yeah yeah, yeah. I, I say all this to say when i lived in tennessee 
that's how everybody like where i lived in murfreesboro yeah. right outside of Nashville, that's how everybody drives but i'm from chicago so right. like i come from the you know if they honk or give me the finger i don't care i needed to yeah. get in because there's like so yeah. much traffic yeah, yeah, yeah. so but that being said if it's like an open highway and there's some like Oh, that happens to me all the time. People like ride me or they're, they're merging on and, they, but they're like, like, I know they're merging, but like, yeah. they're either going 15 miles over the speed limit or 15 miles below the speed limit. Yeah. And it's like, I'm timing it. I'm slowing down or speeding up. I'm timing it to let you in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then they do their I, own thing. Go ahead. I'm a very, very, very conscientious, conscientious 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 yes Close driver yeah. i yeah like i i'm aware of the people around me at all times trying to make sure that i'm doing the best for the greater good it's like when larry cuts off um the handicapped guy to the bathroom because you know right. he's gonna like be able to pee first and get out of there before the other guy would right. um i am all about what's the most efficient thing i'm pro i'm very pro when a car and a pedestrian get to the intersection at the same time, I'm very pro car because the car is going to get through quickly. Car is going to be on his way. If a walking person is walking, they're likely walking for a reason. A car is trying to get to where they're getting anyway, besides the point. Right. But I'm very, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm into the car. What, what's, um, Alice and Janney. I don't know the characters. Yeah. Name. Yep. So I, I, I was gonna write it down. Yeah. I just wrote down Alice and Janney. So, yeah. so when I was going to um, actually I had an experience driving from Wisconsin to Indiana before right. the whole coming back to you, right. um, I was driving the the highway a little above speed limit, a good amount above speed limit, just you know get, get the traffic going. Yeah. And. But I'm not too like familiar with the roads. Only my second time going to that part of Indiana, and I'm driving, and this, like, uh, I, I'm I'm like clearly like in the left lane. I'm I'm clearly like gonna eventually pass the person in the right lane. I'm not like right. cruising past them, but I'm going right. there. A like black truck like whips up behind me, shoots over like speed, and then shoots over the like to the right lane to like try and pass me. And I'm like, nope. Not going to happen. So I sped up to make sure they couldn't cut me, like, cut in there. Right. Do you like right. that move? I, I love, so. Okay, love perfect. perfect. That, ha yeah. that happens, all, well, I mean, like, I yeah. would just, I would just yeah. fucking be like, oh, ah, and just drive faster and then get over. Yeah. Listen, that happens all the time. Oh, yeah. My next question is, were you on a highway? If so, where at in Indiana were you? The, whatever the, like, the main, like, north Indiana, like, you go through Gary. 94. And... I think so. It's going yeah, east. Yeah, you were on 94. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Listen, here's the deal. Whatever this posted speed limit sign is, you can do 10 over and people are still going to pass you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like all fucking day long. But this was like, this was like crazy. So like I, uh, I did like eventually was like, I'm not going to mess around with this. I like I, I slowed down, let them pass me. I like made like a good eye contact with the person uh, next to me. And then like miles later, I get, uh, I, I see cops coming in the rear view mirrors and I'm like, shoot, I'm not familiar with this road. Am I driving like, too fast? I don't know. Right. I pull over, whatever they pass me. I'm like, all right, sweet. And drive a little bit forward. They nailed the same black truck that passed me. Like that was trying to go crazy and passed me half hour later. Yeah. Like 30 yeah. minutes later. So I was, he was like, like from what it sounds like, based on your description, I know those types of drivers around here, that person was probably going 20 miles over the speed limit. Yeah. So that's, that's when they'll stop you for sure. Yeah. For sure. That's wild. Um, <laughs> when Larry says to the little boy, I've never learned a lesson in my life. <laughs> and I think, was that 80 Bryant from SNL? I think that was. I might be wrong. I was setting up the StreamYards link when that bit was going down. Which the played the mom. I think yeah. it was. But yeah. anyways, uh, that was great because that's it's true. 
you know, and I'm, I'm, no, let him get it on his own. Let him get it on his own. (laughs) That was freaking, oh my gosh. What do you got? I just wrote down helping kids learn lessons. (laughs) Yeah. I think about this all the time and I know, I know you got into curb like a little later, Mm -hmm. uh, a little later on. But I truly do. I think about this all the time. So I was like 14 when I started watching Curb, you know. Yeah. And I think sometimes if maybe little, like, little part, like, not major parts, but, like, little idiosyncrasies of my personality would be different had I never watched that show. Because from day one, 100%, I agree with that, you know, like, the whole when she jumps, I mean, they reference it in the episode when she jumps off the ski lift 45 feet and breaks yeah. her kneecaps yeah. because she's not supposed to be with him. It's like, I don't care what your religion is when they wrote that, when they wrote that scripture, they never, they didn't have ski lifts then. You know what I mean? So, like, and yeah. this is obviously yeah, yeah. right. It's like an extreme circumstance, but I, I would watch the show and be like, that makes sense. So, when he said that, I was just like, yeah, no, it's true. Larry David has not changed one degree yeah. Yeah. since this show started at all. At all. All right, what do you got next? Right. Um, I wrote down personal food preferences. I don't like Mexican Relating food. Relating to, sh- to, don't, sh- don't, to don't say it around people. Don't, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so here's the deal. I used, I used to say that there was like foods that I didn't like because I'd maybe tried them once when I was a kid and whatever. Yeah. I gotta be honest. Like I, I can't eat anything too spicy. Uh, cause it just, that's not good for me, but sure. past that, I don't think there's anything that I dislike. What about yeah. you? I, well, going like connecting it to like the, the, the kid story to, to the, to this uh i remember as a kid my brother was uh probably like seven years old i was probably like three i got the story through second hand later but i guess we were at uh uh the church we were going to the pastor's like wife was like pakistani and so we, like went over to their house for dinner and she cooked like all pakistani food mm-hmm. and i guess like my brother like took a bite and like spit it out and was like this stuff tastes terrible like just, how old was he like seven. Oh, gotcha okay. so yeah still like like relatively pretty I, so, still, so like, this, is, this bit just popped into my head i think like under 10 it's passable you can yeah, like be completely yeah, honest on as long as you're under 10 once you get to 10 it's like yeah they should probably yeah. know yeah you gotta kind of bullshit sometimes right <laughs> but yeah i mean i i man i there's not much food i don't like I agree. My style in general, yeah. I also love, I wrote this down, that Cheryl didn't like the remake of The Fugitive with Harrison Ford because I think, <laughs> I mean, like, I'm I'm a such an old soul. Like, I've seen a handful of episodes of the old TV series, black and white TV series, The Fugitive. <laughs> uh, but I just love how they're like, you didn't like the remake of The Fugitive with Harrison Ford, which is a movie that's officially 30 even, years yeah. old. I didn't even pick up on that, like, I didn't take it like that. That's right. Yeah, it's hilarious. Who doesn't like the fugitive? <laughs> yeah. That's... Like, do you not like America? <laughs> Terrison Ford in Chicago, St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. Um, I have down calling other nicknames. So like when he refers to calling the guy the captain. Yeah. Which I'm trying to remember the initial context. Uh, so here's my thing with nicknames. I have so many nicknames. Like mm-hmm. it's, I mean, people just make them up cause they think it's funny. Like between, I mean, just throughout my whole life, different groups of friends, different people I've met, different people I know. I, I'm literally like at least five or six different names in people's phones. Like, Oh yeah. Uh, one close person in my life. I'm, I'm fish boy. Like when, when the phone lights, it says fish yeah. boys calling. Yeah um you know uh this is so many so like for me it's you know it's just like i don't know i think i like nicknames but 
I mean, you mostly just go with juice, right? Right. So. Right. I went like most of my life not having a nickname, kind of always wanting a nickname. With Justin being kind of like not many good, like short for Justin. And right. then just got the nickname. And then there there are like spinoffs of the nickname. Like certain people, like there's Juice Man, um, Juicy. Right. Juice were like a few like little spinoffs. So like. That's always cool to keep track of like, all right, this person calls me that this person's allowed to call me that this person cannot say that at all. Like keeping track of it, but exactly, exactly. Uh, anti Ray's secret recipe. Listen, here's the deal. I listen, family members. There are some fam. There are some people I know that have family recipes or their own recipe and they will not give it up. They just will not give it up for nothing. So what about you? Do, you? do you, uh, is there any family recipes you're, you're seeking to get before people die? I should, I should. Well, there will be. Yeah, definitely. There will be. Um, yeah, my grandma's stuffing. Um, uh, but I don't know. I'm yeah. Like coming in from like the bartender, like cocktail world. Like everything's pretty like shared, right, yeah. right, but right, like yeah. There's, there's only one real way to make an old fashioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for the most part, like everything's like a riff off of like an old, old time thing. I even coworker and I were talking today where he was like, "Well, I worked at this bar and we did that drink. Like, can we put that drink like on our menu?" And I'm like. Like, or is that like wrong? And I'm like, well, I mean, we probably should, you know, put, put our homework into our own hands or whatever, you know? Right. So like, yeah, even in that, it's like, we should change it a little bit, but not if that has anything to do with the anti race discussion, but. Exactly. It could taste the same. You just call something else. Yeah. You know, change, change it slightly. Make it something yeah. personal. Change it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I don't know. I, I think we've kind of given like the gist of part a of the episode the first half right. of the episode, if you will and that's why i i think if you're listening maybe we've been a little hesitant i say we just jump right into the deep end yeah because sure. after what we just discussed all i have written down is callbacks guest stars yeah. uh i you know like right out of the gate we got greg kinnear dean norris allison janney oh the whole suicide thing which that's pretty dark i yeah. i don't really have much to say on that like First of all, Larry, shame on you. You shouldn't be like bringing that kind of stuff up. It's like you and Richard might tell each other everything, but like that's kind of fucked up. Um, do you respect Wood? Yeah. I love how that got brought back. The call, yeah, the my to that, yeah. Top five that. favorite bits of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Do you respect Wood? Yeah. I wrote, yeah, I wrote that. Respect. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. I, I think it's, yeah, I just wrote the respect the law. The law doesn't respect the wood. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, all right. So I want to start here. So courtroom speeches. So Greg Kinnear's character is giving this, uh, like impassioned, like opening statement speech. Mm -hmm. And I have been watching by happenstance, a lot of courtroom dramas the last few months. Okay. So for example, like anatomy of a fall, um, I recent oh the verdict with Paul Newman I've watched that twice in the last few months. Uh I just watched Jagged Edge last weekend for the first time with Glenn Close and Jeff Bridges. Anyways, I'll stop it there. But I've watched a handful of courtroom dramas recently. Sure. And as soon as it started, I was just like, man, this is great. I just like they're Larry in a courtroom. I'm all about this shit, you know, blah 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 blah. And he's like fucking with a fly this whole time yes. Yes. and i'm just like yeah that's pretty on par with larry we got everybody dude we yep. got everybody showed up fucking by the way i'm gonna make this pitch now N numero uno jerry i here i got the next show limited series jerry and larry yeah yeah like oh when jerry showed up i was just like yeah dude oh, this 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 is fucking great this yeah. is great. And then number two, Mr. Mr. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. 
yeah. when you're ready yeah. to retire from music, you should really have your own version of Curb Your Enthusiasm because you are hilarious. I like again, he's he's yeah. in it for a minute. And I know I'm a fan, so I might be a little biased, but I'm just like, dude, he's got he's got whatever it is to do this style of comedy. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? What are your thoughts on all the Mocha Joe and everybody at Yeah, Mocha Joe is gonna yeah, Mocha Joe is gonna bring up. Yeah, the first one, I think, right? Yeah. 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 Mocha Comes Joe. In, guns and he gets yeah. Cause he had the little uh like potentially his cousin or something earlier in the season call back to him. But uh yeah, I love a good Mocha Joe. I like the uh the bear midriff. We're gonna talk about that episode. Um Oh, I love face. the bear midriff. Yeah. They got they brought the girl back from the from the ski lift thing. Yeah, that the ski lift. Great. Um Yeah, what else? Oh, there? the golf club owner. Yeah. Oh but yeah. That, yeah, yeah, the golf club. The uh and then the, the yeah, club. and then him getting the club out of the yeah, out of the Yeah, 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 yeah. The, well, the five would. But what no, what would you what, there's like a like the golf the golf resort that he goes to or whatever. Cause golf club, that sounds weird. Cause that's, yeah. that's what you're using. Uh, yeah, that was, that was all great. I love, by the way, I got to say this now. I love the fact that they brought up the Denise handicapped. Cause like I, that is one of my favorite episodes of the whole series. Denise handicapped. Yeah. And oh, we yeah. don't say her name, but he's like, I fucked the handicapped girl. Yeah. The handi- like, yeah you're a fucking girl on crutches. And I'm like, I'm shouting at the team. I'm like, Denise handicap. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it was in his phone as Denise handicap. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then Susie does this whole bit where she plays. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, this is going south for him in the oh, show yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Turns on him. Turns on Jeff immediately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what did you think about? Do you think it was like at that point where you like this is basically the Seinfeld finale, but maybe a little better? I don't know. Yeah, I well, I think I my prediction was that he was going to go to jail and then get released. OK, Um, which we'll talk about. But yeah, uh, yeah like even our. Uh, um, yeah, I. Kind of that thought process that, you know, they said at the end, like I, my whole thought was, yeah, they were going to put him in prison and then release him and kind of have like this, like almost, almost the best of both worlds where it's like, yes, he should be in prison, but yet also he shouldn't be right. Kind of. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's not like. Yeah, he's he like he shouldn't be in prison, but yeah. he's he's not he's not a good he's, person. He's done things that should get him in prison, right. but he shouldn't be in prison. Like right. what we know, yeah. And I, yeah, so I gotta find the episode in the next day or two. I gotta find the clip when me and you were talking about this because I was like, wouldn't yeah. it be crazy if they just he just does like the Seinfeld finale? And to your point, yeah, they did let him out. We'll we'll and we'll get to that. But like, yeah. the whole premise was like it here comes the soup Nazi and here comes, you know, right. this guy, you know, blah, 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 yep. blah, blah. Um, so yeah, I got to find our discussion and then I'll put it out. Yeah. I'll be like, we talked about this <laughs> two months ago, yeah. you know? Uh, I mean, by the way, uh, so the whole, there were so many, this is one of those finales that like, I'm going to have to rewatch again this week because like, there's so many like, bits that are going on at the same time like it's yeah. it's stuffed it's not over stuff but it's stuffed and this whole right. time leon's finally watching seinfeld yeah yeah and he, and then, yeah yeah go ahead yeah just you know like he's progressing to the finale like you know he's gonna get to the finale before and then make a comment how the be like how the finales are similar or whatever and i love how he says so he's like yo this kramer guy he's yeah. walking in <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> He's living in your house. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, because again, J.D. Smoove does such a great job. I've never once thought of Leon as like a Kramer type because he's so his own character. Right. I, I, I didn't I, 
yeah, I, I like I didn't either. I had other people tell me like, oh yeah, JB Smooth is like the or uh, yeah, Leon's like the Kramer, and I'm like, well, yeah, but well, yeah, mm. sure. Yeah, and yeah. if people have said that to me or I've been a part of conversations, like it goes in one ear and out the other because again, sure. Leon is so is so specific. He's yeah, uh, you know, because it's, think about it this way: like Kramer was a, Kramer was a hustler. He was always hustling yeah. money schemes and right. yeah, they had Leon, Leon moved into that house like he lived in LA. Yeah. He wasn't a part of the Hurricane family, like the yeah, 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 right. And he moves into the house, and then he, him, and Larry just like become friends. And this is like now Cheryl's gone, more or less. And mm-hmm. for Larry, it's like, well, he's already living here. I've got plenty of money we're friends you know what i mean and they're, they've just been like pals this whole time so like but as soon as he said it i was like ah there there definitely is some you know like a venn diagram with kramer right. you know i loved i loved when him and jerry were talking and and uh leon was like you fucked all those girls right and then jerry just does oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. You got 13 hours of footage of it. It's on Laserdisc, though. And I'm like, I wrote down Laserdisc Jerry. Like, what a great Laserdisc reference. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I've been duped by the Laserdisc. Because you thought it was a record? Yeah. Me and my buddy. Um... Oh, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles records right behind the air fryer. You can only okay. see a little small part of it. Yeah. But uh, laser disc, completely duped. My friend and I, uh, we we're young in college, and we went to the old vintage record store. We found a few bunch of copies. We left thinking we just struck gold for like eight dollars, and then we went back to like the little record player one of us had, and was like, "Oh, this doesn't work. These aren't records." Shoot. Laser disc. <laughs> Here's the deal, though: you get a laser disc player. It's watching an early DVD. Yeah, I should. Yeah, I should. I see there's an antique store that I frequent that has laser discs. They're all between like three and eight dollars for the most part. And they got just about every movie I ever made. I'm like, man, if I ever got a laser disc player. <laughs> uh I really liked it overall. Before we get to the verdict and like the end of the episode, what do you have any other thoughts like on just like the whole courtroom trial? I wrote down one quote, Trump, Putin, Larry David. <laughs> like I said, so many bits going on. The whole Greg Kinnear <laughs> thing, he was great. How about yeah. Ted Danson's out there protesting yeah. the whole time? Yeah. Like, that's a great commentary on, like, celebrities that are, like, oh, out yeah. there, you know, because it, it it helps their image. Yeah. You know? Um, I just, I love that whole bit. I just love that it's Ted Danson. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, this, this struck me during the episode. I'm curious to know your thoughts. Like when I first started watching Curb 20 years ago at first, cause like I had like three or four seasons to catch up on. And I was just like, oh, that's, that's so wild. Like Ted Danson from Cheers is on this show, you know, like, cause yeah. he's not really, I mean, no offense to Ted Dan, the great Ted Danson. He hasn't really done anything else since, you know, like cheers is what he's known right. for. And I sit back, like it occurred to me watching the finale tonight. I go, what are the fucking odds? Like, I think most people under 40, when they think of Ted Danson, they don't think of cheers. They think of either like he was on that sitcom, the, the good place that yeah. ran for like yeah, four yeah. or five seasons. That was a big hit show on CBS yeah. and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like yeah. he, he has had this entire second career. Like I, like I said, I would, I'm curious. Most people, if I were to ask them under the age of 40, I would even almost say 45 under the age of 45, Ted Danson. Oh, I love him on Curb. You know what I mean? Over like a, maybe a cheers thing, because I just think we're, we're like 15 years out from people watching cable reruns. You know yeah. what I mean? It just depends. Man. Yeah. It just depends on your parents. Like, yeah. What do you I, think? I, I, yeah. I, 
I grew up on many, many certain shows for sure. So did I. So did yeah, I. yeah. And I know, Cheers. like, I've ne- I've only seen maybe like ten episodes of Cheers. Like, it wasn't like yeah. a show that I watched a lot of. But it's just yeah. like when you think I'd of say... Ted Danson outside of like Three Men and a Baby and stuff, like everybody knew him from Cheers. You know, right, right. I think Cheers maybe like like Seinfeld was big enough to like launch pad to dance and into like a fame of like right being a little bit beyond what curb became but right right what, what yeah. cheers became but, right yeah because i mean i'll never forget this and this we're getting way off subject but i'll bring it up totally random i watched e the e network used to do they used to do like uh, hour long sh- like shows like tell alls on like lottery winners and like the curse of the lottery and like they would obviously do like not biography because that was a and e but they would do like e true Hollywood stories and then they would also do like these countdowns and they did a countdown of the greatest sitcoms of all time and Seinfeld was number one and I they brought it up then and then they there was another thing that they did on like the Seinfeld curse. And this was like 2003, 2000, 2002, 2003. Mm. And they would talk about this Seinfeld curse, how Seinfeld ended. Jerry didn't do any other shows. Uh, Jason Alexander, I think, tried to do a show that got canceled. He, he, did, he did that show that was based on uh, Tony uh, Kornheiser from Pardon the Interruption. But that, that only lasted a season. It was called Listen Up. I watched it. I think that was on in like 04 or 05. Michael Richards hadn't done anything. They talked about the Seinfeld curse. And that was still kind of a thing for a while. But, like, it dawned on me also watching this episode. I was like, God, that's so laughable how 15, 20 years ago they were talking about a Seinfeld curse, which clearly doesn't exist anymore because Julie Louis-Dreyfus did The New Adventures of Old Christine, which that ran for, like, three or four seasons. And then she did Veep which was yeah. huge i mean to right. a certain certain demographic of people they probably know her more right. from that than seinfeld right uh jerry's done the comedians and cars getting coffee for like seven or eight years now on netflix yeah again to a certain demographic that's how they know jerry seinfeld michael richards not so much jason alexander uh, probably not so much but you know what i mean like right right wild wild yeah yeah all right so what do you got next nothing 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 before the yeah well then let's just get to the ending yeah let's do it so he's found guilty to nobody's surprise and i remember them mentioning this a few episodes ago that uh it would be a year long in jail if he was convicted like that's the maximum penalty or whatever i say this to say the lawyer at one point told him she's like well if you lose you'll be a convicted felon and i'm and i'm sitting there thinking and i'm like oh yeah i just sent that so what (laughs) like so what he's a multi-millionaire like so (laughs) that's gonna hurt his job application Get the yeah. fuck out of town. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right, right. Th- what? So he can't. I, I I don't think convicted felons can buy firearms. Larry doesn't strike me like he's a yeah. hunter. He's got his. Uh, yeah, he's got this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what the other like downsides of being a convicted right. felon are, but for Larry David, that doesn't mean anything. Right. You know. So, anyways. Uh, I don't know. I think I, I, that that's a conversation for a different day. But I, I think, uh, you know, that 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 would just be an interesting conversation to have. Like, in, if this was real life, like, would that make a difference for somebody like Larry oh, David at all? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah, it's not like it's not like he's being convicted of, you know, uh, something more serious. He's right. just right, right, right. It, this happens to be a felony. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought the episode was over. They show him in the jail and I'm like, all right, they they did the Seinfeld ending. Still good. 
Still love Curb. It's a great way to send this character, Larry David, off. I knew it didn't end that, that way. And then <laughs> when it ended that way, I was like, this is the greatest fucking ending to... Because it's like, <laughs> it all makes sense. Jerry comes to rescue Larry metaphorically for from the sign i mean they even yeah, reference it right. they're like we should have added right. seinfeld this way <laughs> and like the whole bit because like i thought it was weird i was like i don't know why they did that bit in the bar with jerry and then right. just cut it yeah yeah they yeah just cut it like i love the bit but yeah. like it, it, it was that was fast and i was like where's this going right oh, that's where it's going yeah so what are all your thoughts on all that yeah i thought i think that's what i thought like I th- I, yeah, I don't know if I said it out loud. I don't think I said it on a previous show. But I think, yeah, my thoughts, my prediction was he was going to get convicted, going to jail, and then something was going to happen and he was going to get let out. Like even um, before my shift last Saturday, I was talking uh, to our chef and brought up Curb. And he was watching, he doesn't watch Curb, but uh, he watched Seinfeld. So we were talking about how like, Oh, is it going to be, you know, is it going to be the Seinfeld ending? I'm like, I think he'll go to prison, but I think he's going to get let out. I said that verbatim, and here it is true to this day. Rob, you're muted. That is true, because I had to blow my nose. <laughs> I was listening, though. I, I didn't have anything to say. Uh, that's, yeah, no, it's it's hilarious. I just love how we talked about all this like two months ago. Yeah. Right. And I, yeah, you were like, ah, they're going to convict him and they're going to let him out. And I'm like, they're going to do the Seinfeld. They're going to do the Seinfeld finale. You know, they did all of it. They just like yeah. just got it all in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's great. I loved it. I loved the ending. I just love seeing Jerry Seinfeld because. Oh, yeah. He's, he's Jerry Seinfeld, you know, so and you can tell like, I don't know when he's with when he's on curb, when he's with Larry. He just seems so natural. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. good, but it, like, it doesn't feel like, you know, like they have him on because he's Jerry Seinfeld. It's like, right. no, like him and Larry are buddies. More comfortable. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like he's totally chill. Yeah. Rest in peace, Richard Lewis. Yeah. It was so great. I loved the ending where they're all on the plane and they're just arguing and you're yeah. just like, okay, we've now officially left this group of people. Like we're not, right. we're not going to get to right. be a part of their lives or, or watch them from yeah. a distance. Like there's no more voyeurism with, yeah. this, with this group yeah. of people. Uh, but you kind of know that none of them are going to change and you could pop yeah. back in 10 years from now and they'll be doing the same shit, yep. the yep. exact same shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. All right, so final thoughts before we get out of here. Loved it. Yeah. How much to say? I loved it too. Yeah, there isn't a yeah. lot to say because it's not – I don't know. I, tomorrow I guess we'll tell because, again, sure. I haven't talked sure. to anybody. I haven't even talked to my friend Jimmy about this yet. Yeah. I'm sure I'll text with him tomorrow. But I haven't checked social media. We'll find out. We'll find out if there's like a, a backlash oh, sure. of people that don't yeah. like it. But for me, as far as it, as far as it's concerned, it's really hard to do a series finale, and Larry David knows this. So to do it the way they did it, I think they pulled it off perfectly. Yeah. This isn't going to go down like The Sopranos or Breaking Bad or Seinfeld or Friends or The Office no. or How I Met Your Mother, where some people loved it, some people didn't. An opinion's an opinion. I think generally, like the curb crowd's going to be like. Yeah, this was the way to go. Let's go. Let's go back and rewatch season one now. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Here's the game plan. This is our season twelve, episode ten, series finale reaction recap conversation. All that jazz. We're really tired, but we wanted to get this in tonight to just kind of do yeah. an immediate reaction. We are going to come back soon and have some some of our buddies on and we're all going to sit around we'll talk we'll talk we'll recap all of season 12 just in general we'll have a group conversation on that and then whether it be the same episode or its own episode might do two uh we're going to do uh like best of curb your enthusiasm the whole series 
talk about all of our favorite bits, all of our, you know, just all of it. And I think having that in-depth conversation is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. That's why I'm thinking those might yeah. be two separate, separate yeah. episodes. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm starting to lean. Too. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll TBD on the dates, but within the next couple of weeks for sure. So stay tuned for that. Until then, Justin the Juice, what do you got going on and where can everybody find you at? With the show on Wednesday, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know if anyone knows what we're doing. But we're doing gotcha. something, I think, maybe. Gotcha. But if we are doing it, we're doing it on <laughs> Wednesday, April 10th, 2024 at 9 p.m. Central Time. And you can catch us there doing something that your guess is as good as mine because I don't know. Heck yeah. I love I love those kind of episodes. Me and Lego do that sometimes on Characters of Culture. We're like, eh, let's just do a show. We we'll just do a show, and it's a blast. It's a blast. Yeah. So, yeah, you can find me here on the RFN. I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. All that jazz. You guys be well. Curb your enthusiasm. Don't ever change. Take it easy. Squeeze it easy. And I'll have a vanilla...